Hello and welcome to the Adderies Football Netball Show brought to you by Gameface. I'm Adam Miller and once again alongside me is Steph Marcus. Good afternoon, Steph. Good afternoon, Aiden. We're at episode seven already and we have plenty going on as usual. Getting close towards the middle of the season, we're going to quickly run you through the show for today. So firstly, we have Around the Grounds once again. We have another segment of ones to watch, players that we think you should be keeping an eye on this weekend. Our Saturday Sizzlers will be back again for this episode as well. And we will, of course, do our match of the round previews. Um, Wuri Yalik versus Jen Book Cockatoo this week. And a post-match interview with Yates President Peter Armstrong about how the season's going so far and coming back from recess in the football. And our special guest this week is Matt Cook. Matt is a very successful netball coach with the Pakenham Lions. He also coaches the Southern Saints 23 and under squad in the BNL. He's coaching the 17 and under Outerys football netball team at the Netball Victoria Association Championships um, this Sunday. And fantasy football and netball is back as well. We're going to add to our teams and select more of our football forward line and a netball goal attack as well. Lovely. All right, let's go around the grounds. Firstly, the Netball Victoria Association Championships are this Sunday. Good luck to our 17 and under, 15 and under, and 13 and under squads for competing this weekend. Absolutely. And in more news, congratulations to Veronica, Emily, and Zoe. They won our Melbourne Vixens giveaway, and they'll be going to watch the Vixens this Saturday night, so we hope you have fun. Our next theme round is Soccer to MND round, and we've already seen plenty of our clubs getting involved. Let us know if you have an event or a fundraiser going on at your club to support Fight MND. And earlier in the week as well, our trainers had the opportunity to attend a Q&A and practice taping session um, with some physiotherapists from Hawthorne Football Club. So thank you to everyone who attended. We hope you got a lot out of that session. And a massive thank you to Victor Sports who helped us organise that opportunity. Over the King's birthday weekend, next weekend, our juniors will compete in the Interleague Carnival. Best of luck to all players competing. In more news, next week on June 5th, we're hosting a Coach Your Way program for women and girls. It's so important for our participants to have strong role models both women and men. So our goal of ours is to increase our female coach numbers. Um, see our socials if you want to register for the program or reach out to us if you'd like more details. We'd love to have you there. And lastly, our friends at GameFed are also on the lookout for some more videographers. If you're interested, please reach out and we can put you in contact with their team. All right, let's jump into ones to watch. Aiden, do you want to tell us about a footballer that you think you'd want to watch this week? Oh, well, we're going to go through Dale Senior from Hillsville. He's a veteran of the club. He's played for a very long time. Uh, this season, he's averaging 3.2 contested marks, 10.2 intercept positions. He's leading the team in contested and intercept marks, and his total disposal efficiency across the season is 83%. From a women's football perspective, I've been keeping my eye on Sway Crowd from Thornton Eildon. She's a midfielder. She's only played four games so far this season, but... Three of those four, she's been named in the best players. She's had some really dominant performances in the midfield and she's been selected a few times for the team of the week. So I'm really interested to see if she can get a few consistent games together, how her season goes, and I'm looking forward to watching more. And from the netball, Rebecca Taylor from Belgrave playing in wing defence this season. She's part of the leadership team across their netball. She's the co-captain of the A-grade team. She's a reliable and strong defensive player. All right, let's move into our Saturday Sizzlers. So these are the matchups that we're looking forward to this week. First up in our Saturday Sizzlers is between Mitch Parker from Alexandra and Christy Yeager from Yarra Junction uh, in this week's matchup between Alexandra and Yarra Junction. So Mitch this season is averaging five clearances, 5.4 tackles, 6.2 average score involvement, and he's first in the team for center clearances and he's top five in the Division One competition. For Christy Yeager, he's averaging five and a half clearances a game, 4.3 tackles a game, he's also averaging 4.3 score involvements, and he's first in the Yarra Junction team for center clearances and he's top 10 in Division One. From a women's footy perspective, we have Lillian Pagels, who's a full forward from Warburton Wesburn, versus Katie Granger, who's a full back from Officer. So this is Lillian's first season with Warburton Wesburn because she came from Seville, but she's juggling really well with her new team. She's got three goals so far this season. She's been in the best players twice, and she's been in our team of the week once so far. Um, Katie, it's also our, her first season in our competition as well. So she was a really strong signing for Officer alongside her sister for season 2024. She's really good at holding down the fort in full back and she's been in the best plays four times and out in the middle week once as well. So I think, um, yeah, Katie will have a bit of a hard time holding Lillian down and I'm excited to see who can uh, win that battle. And our netball Saturday season will be between Brittany Tate of London playing as wing attack and Millicent Hooper of the Packing on Mines in wing defence. Both players read the play very very well. Both players have very high agility. Both players are versatile. In fact, Millie has played a fair bit in the centre as well this season. And 
both players have featured multiple times in our team of the week. Okay, it's time to jump into our match of the round previews. Let's take a look at this weekend's match of the round, Royalik versus Jembrook Cockatoo. Should be a really interesting game, this one. Of course, a bit of a rivalry between these two clubs as well. In the football, Royalik is second on the ladder, currently undefeated at 7-0, and Jembrook Cockatoo struggling a little bit this year, but this is an important game for them nonetheless. They're 2-5 on ninth on the ladder. And probably in the midfield, it will be the battle of the two skippers, I reckon, between Cody Vasoli of Uri Alec and Damien Bolter from General Cocker too. Well, the key position matchups, I think, firstly, Jacob Atchison from Uri Alec will likely line up on Miles Wareham. That will probably depend on Ben Munkhorst's fitness this week. He's missed the last couple of weeks, so that will be interesting to see how that plays out. And Caleb Marshall and Ben Shields will likely have the matchups on Josh Neal and Taylor Gibson in the football. Then going across to the netball, Jembrel Cocker to a ninth on the ladder, also with a two and five record like the football. Worry a tenth on the ladder with a one and six record. Alexis Bell will likely have the matchup on Danica Corliss and Gabby Clark will probably line up on Mariah Bell. Who who's your pick, Aiden? Let's start with the footy first. Who do you reckon? Uh Worry Alec. I'm with you. I think Worry's gonna take it out in the footy. I'm the opposite though for the netball. So uh, I'm Jim Brook with that one. Yeah, we'll back Jim Brook too in the netball matchup. That one should be pretty close, I think. The netball very important game for both teams there to get a win. All right, well, it's time to jump into an interview. On Saturday, Aiden had the pleasure of speaking with Peter Armstrong, the Yay president, after their third win in four weeks. Great to see them back up and about. Let's take a look. Well, we're here today with Yay president Peter Armstrong after another fantastic victory for the Yay football club. And Peter, three wins in four weeks. It must feel pretty good. Yeah, it is good, Aiden. It's, um, yeah, we're three for three now, so which is good. Coming from a season where you know, two years ago we were Broadford and last year we went to recession, we couldn't ask for any better, actually. They've done a fantastic job so far this season. Take me back to kind of late 2022, early 2023, when you sort of figured you were going to go into recess. Did, did you give yourself much chance or did you, did you think there was a good chance you were going to be able to get back into the competition? Um, yeah, so... Three weeks before the season started in 23, we probably had six players turn up for training and we had to make the call, So, which was a hard call to make. We held as long as we could and then we spent a lot of time in 23 coaches, rebuilding, chasing players um, and to where we are now, it's fantastic. So yeah, we wouldn't actually think, we couldn't ask for anything better. Apart from yourself, who have been some of the key figures in getting the club back into playing football this year? Uh, there's the groupers, the committee, like we all got together, there's probably there's 15 or so on the committee, um, but getting locals back involved, it's not so much, it's, it's everyone doing their part, like especially the netball if you kept the club going, and the juniors, you know, over the years when the senior football was uh, struggling, um, so it's taken, yeah, it's, it's, it's a multiple amount of people, it's a, yeah, it's a widespread, so there's a lot of people involved. Has it lifted the community a little bit, getting the football team back up and running? Uh, definitely. Definitely has. I mean, our crowds have been fantastic. We haven't seen crowds around here for a long time like we have. Um, yeah, and, and we've got a lot of local kids. We're not a club where we've dragged in paid players and we're chasing. We've got probably 6% we're talking about it this morning. Probably 6% of our you know senior players you know, over the ones and twos are local kids or you know, growing up in the age. So, no, it's good. You're currently three wins this season. You're six on the ladder as well, so you're just one spot outside of the top five. That's a pass mark at the end of the season, you think. No, I don't want to. Like, really, <laughs> we don't look. Where it's great if we if we can have six wins for the year, we thought that was going to be fantastic, and we're heading towards that. So, no finals now. We've been great to look at. Let's wait and see. Peter, thank you so much for joining us today, mate. We're really happy to talk with you today. Good luck for the rest of the season. No, thanks, Aiden. What an incredible interview that was, Aiden, featuring some very special guests. All the cockatoos in the background. They were. So um, now we'll take a look. Coming to the worst time, those birds. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. A great feature from them. <laughs> now we are going to have a chat to this week's in-studio guest, which, as we mentioned at the start of the show, is Matt Cook. Well, Matt, thank you for joining us today on the show. It's... Uh... Uh, very good to have you in here today. And uh, the first question we wanted to ask you was, can you just tell us a little bit about your coaching journey? Yeah, I guess um, I guess I like most most like most males that end up involved in the sport. It's, it's we take our children to their own sport. Uh, we become involved as part of the parents, and then as the children grow up, and you realise, well, I actually enjoy this element still. Um, we get further involved. So uh, I obviously started at club level, at association level very quickly moved into some VNL landscape. 
And um, I've been involved in being at the club, community, um, men's, men's Australia, mixed Australian for quite some time. What do you enjoy most about coaching? I think it's just more the enjoyment that you watch when the players achieve something that they've set themselves for. It doesn't necessarily mean a premiership or a medal or anything of that nature, but you know, some players set themselves for, you know, I want to score this many goals in a game or I want to, you know, I want to play against my friend here and leave them there. It's just different different levels of athletes want something different and when you see them achieve that and you can see that you contributed to that, that's that's the really um, motivating part for one. Uh, the Netball Victoria Association Championships are this Sunday and you'll be coaching the 17 yep. and under OFN team. What are you looking forward to when selecting your NVAC team at the trials? Oh, I think when we're picking for something like Association Championships, it's a condensed day. Um, there's not a lot of room for um, experimentation and error. Um, you make a mistake in that first one or two minutes of a 14-minute game and the thing can slip away from you. So I think what we look for when we select players, and we are selecting them for the day specifically, we're not selecting them for a long-term development programs or anything of that nature. We we try to pick players who can consistently demonstrate you know, the skills that are appropriate for the position that they're nominated. And we like to pick some players with some flexibility where they can play one or two roles because we, we do have to take into account someone gets injured, someone hurts himself, they're not available. It's a big change to make on a, with very little time. What's been happening at uh, training so far in preparation for the competition? Yeah, I, I would suggest that what we look at here is that we want to make sure that we can deliver something quickly with the players. We can familiarise themselves with each other. We can we can build a kind of a game style or some structure that they can execute under pressure. So we obviously focus on introducing players to their role within the group and how and the attributes that they need to deliver to be successful in that space. And we. We don't want it to be too confusing. We're not talking about hundreds of set plays. We're talking about this is what we're looking for in the role. This is what we're asking you to bring. And we kind of build those programs to help build out that, that those good behaviours for them. Yeah. Uh, you've coached across several different parts of the netball pathway, including being the current coach of the 23 and under squad at the Southern yep. Saints in the VNL. What do you take from that experience uh, when coaching the NBAC team? Oh, I think what we take out of that is preparedness. You know, prepare the athletes for what they're going to get on the weekend. Uh, make it appropriate for the circumstances they're in. Obviously, a VNL program is slightly different. We're preparing for 20 games or 18 games across the season, so you don't have to be up the whole time, but you've got to be up at the right time. I think in, when it comes to this, just having them prepared so the players feel comfortable in their function, they're comfortable in their role, they know what it is they've got to do, and they're, and they're not measuring success on something that's not unachievable. Right? Give them something that they can really focus on and really deliver themselves. Yeah, uh, you've been involved with the Pakenham A grade side, the Pakenham Lions A grade yep. side for the past seven years. Yep. Uh, what do you enjoy about being involved at the grassroots level? I just think community netball and something like football netball for community netball is is literally where you see the most passion. It's where you see the most involvement from your community. It's where you see the most involvement and dedication from your players. Some players are using that as a platform to help develop for something else, and some that's the pinnacle of their game and what they want to achieve. They want to be part of their community. Some in this case, like Packham, you've got you've got generations, second and third and fourth year generations of players that are playing in front of their grandmother and their and their mother, and, and they want to achieve the same type of success. So I, I just think it, it's it's just that community engagement. Nothing nothing is quite like it. Yep. Uh, you've also achieved a lot across your coaching career. Is there anything else that you'd like to be able to achieve before you finish up? I, in all honesty, I'd love an A-grade premiership. Um, not just because, uh, it, simply because it's probably the hardest thing to achieve inside this landscape, this this environment that we play in outer east here. There's a uh, equalisation process in place. Development has to come across a number of years. Uh, we've invested heavily in our coaching ranks and developing our own junior players, retaining our own junior players. Um, we'd love to see, I'd love to see a win in that space for everyone that's been involved because it's, it is a long-term commitment to, to get to that level. Yep. And lastly, what advice would you give to all the players who are playing this Sunday in the Netball Victoria Association Championships? I'd remind them to remember why they started playing. All right, enjoy the day for what it is. Like it's an opportunity to play with your peers, in front of your parents, in front of your friends. Um, be a good teammate. In other words, that you know, how, how you guys, sides will be more successful if they play for each other and they enjoy each other. And for the players who are looking for it as a method to be talent identified, when when you're all playing for each other, you all actually look better. Yeah. Well, Matt, that's pretty much. 
everything we wanted to ask you. And we'd like to thank you for joining us on the Outer East Football Netball Show. Good luck for this Sunday Thanks. and also good luck for the rest of the season. Thanks, Thanks Barry. Appreciate it. Our last segment for this week, of course, is fantasy football and netball. We'll be building on our teams um, from last week. So for this week in the footy, we are selecting a forward pocket and a half forward flank. Who are your selections for this week we're going to add to your team? Forward pocket couldn't go past Aaron Marley. He's already got 15 goals this season. Biggest haul was six goals against Berwick Springs in round seven. And he's just such a versatile player. He's good at grand level. He can also play a little bit taller as well, Aaron Mullet. Of course, a former AFL player as well. He played seven years with the North Melbourne Kangaroos in the year with Carlton and came across from the Eastern Football League a couple of years ago. And he's been an absolute star since he's joined the London Bulldogs. Uh, for the half forward flank, I went with Rebecca Thompson from Up by Tacoma. She's got eight goals this season with uh, three goals against Berwick Springs being her biggest haul for the season. All right. Well, for my forward pocket, I've gone with Olivia Edwards from Melinda Fanny Creek. We spoke about her last week. She keeps her team in those tight games. She's a big impact player. She's kicked 14 goals so far this season. So, yeah, couldn't go past her. For my half forward flank, I've gone with Sam Turner from Nary Warren. So he's leading his team in goal involvements. He's the third leading goal kicker in Premier Division at the moment. And what I like most about him is he's still young, he's still up and coming. So excited to see more from him and he's going on to my footy team. He is a very good player and uh, part of a long line of Tonus from the Nary Warren Football Club is uh, about six or seven, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember. So, but no, he's having a very, that's a very good pick, I will say, yeah. Thank you. All right, well, let's take a look at netball. Today, we're only adding a goal attack. So who have you gone? Went with Kayla Lalanting from Emerald. She's a star of the competition, also plays in the BNL. 289 goals this season, her biggest haul, been 44 goals against Wurri Alec in round five and also against Rock in round seven. So Kayla will line up as my goal attack alongside Amalia Blake. For my goal attack, I've gone with Steph Ferguson from Mombol. She's obviously their team captain. I feel like she's a really strong voice out there. She's a strong leader, and I want someone like that out of my team. She's already shot 147 goals so far this season, some really strong and consistent performances, so she's my next pick. Well, that pretty much wraps up all there is to talk about in the Outer East this week. If you'd like to see anything more on the show, make sure you leave something in the comments down below. For all those listening, for all those tuning in as well, don't forget to get your game face on. 